Hello sentient beings and welcome back. I am posting again. I'm so excited that I am getting back into this routine. I'm trying to be very good about posting every two weeks. So um, I'm going to try my best and make that happen. So today I am going to answer some of your comments um, and also answer some questions in, in those comments. So first off, we have Uncle Kenta, who asks, are silly robes and hats required or optional? Just curious. So Uncle Kenta, thank you for your comment. And so silly robes and hats are not required as a Buddhist, especially not for lay individuals. And by lay people or lay person, um, it means you're not a monk or a nun, um, you don't live in a temple or monastery, and have not shaved your head or taken vows. Uh, so as someone who is uh, not a monastic, you don't have to wear any, um, you don't have to have a certain attire in order to be Buddhist. So um, what those robes and hats do represent, though, is uh, the vows that they took. And by wearing the robes is a reminder of those vows and to always uphold them. Essentially, the robes are supposed to be a reminder for you to remember your precepts, your vows, um, and just overall your... Um, motivation for being a Buddhist. Next we have Ali Akbar. Hi, thanks for this video. I am a Muslim, but recently I have started knowing more about the teachings of Buddha, Karma, and reincarnations. I truly believe all teachings of Buddhism. Looking forward to more videos. In, in, past, in the past three days, I have checked your channel ten times for new videos. One thing I truly appreciate in one of your videos is that you said that most people like to study Buddhism but don't practice it. Have a great day. Well, thank you, Ali. Um, that is really, um, it really means a lot to me to hear someone say that, um, to uh, know that my video has impacted you somehow in some way and was even a little bit helpful um, to you, then I feel like I have done my job. So I personally have benefited a lot from Buddhism. Um, I had depression, um, well, kind of depression. I don't want to um, make, you know, severe depression symptoms any uh, less than it is by saying that I have depression because I wasn't diagnosed with it or anything but uh, I you know I didn't know what I wanted to do and I feel like I was on autopilot every day in college and overall it, it was just um, uh, looking at the future I was unhopeful and I just thought to myself what is the meaning of all of this so uh, Buddhism helped me a lot, uh, helped me got out of that slump, uh, and I wanted to share that gift, that, you know, treasure, um, that helped me personally and emotionally and spiritually, and I feel like that's what people need nowadays is um, more mental and spiritual support. I don't think it's fair to say that not everyone practices Buddhism who say they're Buddhist. Um, I myself am guilty of calling myself a Buddhist and not necessarily practicing it. It's very common um, and it just it doesn't just happen within the Buddhist community, absolutely not. Um, but because the definition and the guidelines of being a Buddhist is so vague that often almost anyone can call themselves a Buddhist because there's no 
bar per se. Next we have Sulale V. Uh, can you do a video about the relationship between Buddhism and vegetarianism? I absolutely can. Um, that is a very common question and I would love to do a video on that. Uh, however, I feel like it's kind of been covered uh, and if you Google it, you'll also find uh, a lot of answers, but the short of it is basically you don't have to be a vegetarian to be a Buddhist. Um, you can absolutely still eat meat. Um, a lot of Tibetan monks who live in the plateaus of Tibet, they don't necessarily have access to fruits and vegetables easily. So a lot of them aren't vegetarians for that reason. Um, the Buddha did give some guidelines to eating um, a more in a more compassionate way if you're going to eat meat. So there are uh, what's called the threefold rule for um, eating blameless meat. Um, to if you you know can be a vegetarian or vegan right off the bat and so uh, the three rules are that you um, aren't told that this animal will be slain for your consumption uh, number two you don't see the animal being slaughtered for your consumption and number three not even suspecting or you know having knowledge of the fact that this meat is being slain for you so uh these are the three principles that you know you can start off with in order to um eat cleaner meat cleaner by cleaner um i mean more compassionate way of eating um so you don't have to give off give up meat right off the bat. These three principles um, help you just develop more compassion um, even if you can't give up meat just yet. So uh, that's one way to start. You don't have to go completely vegan or vegetarian right off the bat. It's often hard for people, especially if you grew up eating meat is definitely a life a big lifestyle change and definitely do it slowly otherwise you'll um go right back to it and probably swear never to be a vegetarian again and you know that's not necessarily um the the best thing so take it slow these are some great comments guys and i'm just so impressed on uh, just the the depth and how curious you guys are are all are are uh, in knowing more about Buddhism. So next we have Zang Manik who asks, I want to practice Buddhism because I want to fix the bad parts of me. I have a tendency to be self-destructive. By that I mean always being my own worst en enemy and not believing myself, stressing myself out, and so on. So Zane, I completely understand. Being self-destructive is um, innate in all of us. We turn to undermine ourselves. Um, and thank you for posting this. I know that is deeply personal to you. And so I really appreciate uh, you being vulnerable to, to me and to all of us and um, asking that question. And I feel like a lot of people relate to that and myself included so um i feel like buddhism is definitely helpful uh in that regard and helping you feel less um stressed anxious um not believing in yourself you buddhism can help you be more confident for sure but not in the um, traditional sense that you might see in self-help books or in like a Tony Robbins uh, seminar. Um, it's not about um, 
self affirmations and just saying that over and over, and you'll have self confidence or even fake it until you make it. It's really more about understanding yourself,、uh, because where does confidence come from? But、uh, knowing exactly、um, what you know and what you don't know. And with Buddhism, you're exploring all aspects of yourself, so you ultimately know exactly who you are and who you're not. And by having such clear knowledge about yourself, you don't have to pretend. You know your limitations. You accept them. Even if you fail, you forgive yourself.、Um, and through that. You develop a little bit more confidence in what you do and what you say.、Um, confidence also comes from experience、um, and practicing some of the right views, right speech that the Buddha taught. And so, I mean, I would love to make a video on that on the Eightfold Path. Um, but the short of it is yes,、uh, Buddhism does help,、um, and I would encourage you to explore the Eightfold Path、um, as well as、um, the Way of the Bodhisattva、um, by Shanti Deva.、Uh, that is maybe a little more high level, but if Buddhism interests you, I definitely encourage you to look into.、Um, That text,、um, read it with a commentary. I like Pema Chodron's、uh, commentary. I can link this in the description below. Martial Art Brothers. Hi, I'm a 13 year old boy. I really need. I really want to become a Buddhist. Excuse me. I have a lot of Buddhas in my room, but I don't know how to become a Buddhist. I need your help, please. I'm from Denmark, by the way. Well, hi, Martial Arts Brothers. From Denmark,、um, I love this question because、um, I think there's a lot of people like yourself, and I see a lot of comments under yours that you know people who reply to you, and I feel like that is so common that you know, especially someone your age who's a little bit younger who wants to practice Buddhism but aren't necessarily surrounded、um, by a community. That is supportive of that, or、um, or nor do they have any resources to be a Buddhist around them, and that makes it really hard to be a beginner Buddhist. Where is and it's when you really need a lot of support and guidance. And so I guess my advice、um, to you is、um, to use the internet. So、um, you're probably already looking at Buddhist videos、um, since you're already on my own.、Uh, there's a lot of great channels out here, but essentially, read and absorb as much as you can.、Um, and if there are centers near you, definitely go to them、um, because they will help you a, a great deal.、Um, I encourage everyone to go to their nearest monastery or temple. Uh, because a community will help you get to where you want to be so much faster, and you'll have peers just like you walking on the same path, and that is、uh, really something that you can't get anywhere else.、Uh, and they'll help realign you if you get off the path, and so it's、um, really invaluable to be a part of a sangha or a community.、Um, but if you don't,、um, There's always online, and there's always ways to connect digitally with a community or a master.、Um, so probably more on that later, but I'll link some things in the description below for you. Thank you for your comment. Next we have、um, James Wakelin.、Um, so James, you submitted a lot of great comments, and some of them I won't answer here because I'm going to make them into a video. Um, because they're just so good, and it's a great topic to explore.、Um, so I、uh, I do like your comment here, though. Of、uh, so I know there are many daily practices for lay Buddhas, but what daily practice could we all do every day to cultivate ourselves? 
which practice is a great start for the aspiring Buddhist? So, um, this question uh, is, you know, is a great one and um, it's understandable for a beginner Buddhist to ask and I feel like there should be an answer but it really just depends on you. Like many aspects of Buddhism, it's all very personal and very customized and that's what makes Buddhism great. It's like it's a whole 84,000 different kinds of medicine um, that is targeted towards whatever illness um, that you feel and or you know whatever problems that you have so it's uh, it depends on what you need and where you are in life and what you can accept and what you are look you're more uncomfortable with um, and so I don't know if I should give you a, a way of practice because there's so many different practices you can definitely google some online I would suggest googling some uh, I'll link it in the description below as well um, and then try them out and see if you like it but before you try anything do read up on it and see what the sentiment and intention is behind it the intention is key when practicing so that you don't just go through the gestures because that makes it you know meaningless um, definitely uh, with anything you do any kind of traditions you do um, set the right intention of compassion and mindfulness and wanting to better yourself for all living beings when you set the intention straight um, your practice will be even more effective so read up on the intentions do them and see if it resonates with you so um, there is one practice though and you can try this um, yourself to see if you like it if not totally fine um, but this is a um, very powerful practice that I feel like immediately gets um, to the root of uh, my when, when I'm in a, in a slump, when I'm feeling depressed or angry, immediately I'm okay. I immediately feel open and, and accepting and compassionate. And that is Tonglen. Tonglen is, um, although it is simple, it is not easy. Um, it is also not hard, but it's not something that anyone can do, uh, especially here in the West. Um, so essentially what you do is you start with uh, mindfulness breathing. And so mindfulness breathing is simply letting yourself breathe, um, whether you're sitting in a sitting in a chair or sitting on a cushion cross-legged, um, or lying down even um, just being aware of your breath coming in and out if you um, if your thoughts wander bring your attention back to the breath and over and over like that that's mindfulness um, and awareness of the breath and after you do that for maybe um, a few minutes depending on you know how how long you'd like to do that you transition to Tonglen uh, where you breathe in whatever uh, negative uh, state that you're in breathe it all in imagine that you're breathing in for example if you're angry imagine you're breathing in all the anger of the world so since you're already angry why not you know What's the harm of taking on all the anger of the world, you know? And so um, the key here is to not be afraid to take it all in. And when you take it in, kind of imagine um, black air, smoke coming into you. And 
So, so you're, you're sucking in all the bad and negative parts of people, of, of everyone. You want to take it away from them and bring it onto yourself and breathe it in. And when you breathe it in, the key here is to not breathe it into yourself, but into your heart. Um, your heart, imagine that it is made out of space, vast emptiness. Um, you're breathing it in to that vast emptiness of the universe. So you're breathing in to the vast empty space of your heart that can hold anything and everything. And then when you breathe out, you breathe out pure light and compassion and wisdom. And so imagine that when you're breathing out, it's light and compassion going towards those people that you've just taken their anger from. So I do that for a few minutes until all of a sudden I feel calm um, or I sometimes start crying because I understand how um, uh, why people feel anger or you know why it is that someone yelled at me for example um, really behind the anger is a lot of vulnerability and often I start feeling empathy for that person and their vulnerability and how much hurt is behind that anger that I start crying and really um, when you empathize with someone so much, there's no need to be angry with them when you understand why they do what they do. So that's one practice and um, I just wanted to share that with you because it's it's amazing. Um, but do explore anything else that interests you. So hope that helps. Oh, so that's it guys. Um, so this is just a comments answering video. I just wanted to do one of these because I really appreciate all of your comments. Do continue leaving them. Um, I uh, love hearing from you guys. Let me know what videos I should do next um, in the description below. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Have a peaceful and wonderful day.